You're watching Enterprise Nation TV with O2 Business. Charlie, hello. Hello, welcome to the hello, Enterprise Nation interview. So first of all, can you take me back to the beginning? How did it all happen yeah. in the Copamas? Where did it all come from? Well, originally I started off as a, as like a lad going to school and then started bunking off school, worked with a local plumber and you know, he had a motorbike, a car, nice ass, loads of money, nice clothes, all of this and that inspired me to want to be a plumber. You know, he said to me then that I would earn loads of money and never be out of work and that's the information I pass on to people now. So the seeds were sown, you know, very, very sort of at a young age. And, uh, and then I'd done an apprenticeship and I left school at 15, I always say a big mistake, I should have left at 14. And I'd done my apprenticeship, then become self-employed and then after a couple of years set up Pimlico Plumbers and um, you know, probably organically it's all grown over the years, yeah. So when you first set up Pimlico Plumbers, what, what challenges did you face you know, starting, starting that business in those early days? I think any business, there's lots of challenges and, and nobody ever wants to be under the impression that it's an easy ride. There's, there's sleepless nights, there's can I afford the bills, have I got enough money to sort of live and eat and you know all these problems that come with businesses but what I would say to somebody once you go through them sort of teething problems and if you do get there you know the saying now is there's no business like your own business. So what, what point do you think you decided in that you became you're an apprentice plumber at what point was there a sort of moment where you suddenly thought actually set this self-employment thing this is for me i want to be a, i want to be a business owner well to be honest it wasn't meant like that you know i've always said to in every interview i do i was more than happy just to be a plumber and earn a great living and earn loads of money and, and enjoy life but you know, you, your sort of demands for your services become more. And once that happens, you have two choices. You can't get sort of everywhere. And then it was sort of, you know, pointed out to me that about employing people. And once you employ people, that's the changing point. You know, it either goes, it either goes sort of wrong or you get it right. And you know, the more people, you know, I'm a great believer to be successful, you've got to employ people. So the changing point was employing people. That's a big, a lot of our members, because I said a lot of our members are working at home, they're on their own, employing that first member of staff is like a massive step for them. So what was it like for you, you know, how did you deal with that? Yeah, I'd say the same thing, you know. We, we never think that we're gonna, you know, that we're in a position to employ people. But once you start taking on people, you have a responsibility, more of a commitment. And I think you sort of step up a level and you start making things happen. And, you know, I've got to now find this person's wages. So a lot of people are very worried about employing people. All I'm saying is, I believe to be successful, you have to have more than just you around you. And, you know, no business is about you, it's about the people that you employ. Employer. So once you make that step, you've got to do it on a gradual basis. I mean, you know, the first, I started off with one guy and then I remember building up to about 10 people. Then you want to get to 20, then 30, 50, 100. And the more people you employ, I believe the more successful you are. But it's not an easy ride. Have you had any mentors that helped you? I haven't had mentors, but you know, I said to you that I met up with this plumber years ago and uh, he was my inspiration. You know, had money, motorbike, car, nice house, uh, lovely clothes, loads of money, and, 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 and nice holidays. So that inspired me to think that, you know, if I learn, if I do what he's doing, I could be like him. And, and I believe we all learn from somebody, you know. Okay, so yes, I drive a Bentley, and yes, I have a nice car, and yes, I have a, a, a villa in Marbella, and yes, I have a, a great big office thing. And if people look at that and it inspires them, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I think success inspires people. Did, did you have, did you ever have that vision in the early days? Did you, is no, it, not is at it all. Because of him, were you ever working towards that? I wasn't really working to it, but all I wanted to do, if I'm probably being honest, was be like him. And my life very much followed him. You know, he was he he, became, he was a boxer. Uh, he, he was a plumber, a boxer and a family man and then then he, he went into to sort to grow his business so in a way i would say the seeds were sown then and i would say to people that you know if you'd have been a bank robber like maybe i would have been a bank robber because the seeds were so so we all learn from somebody and we have to listen to people and just pick up one thing from somebody 
you know, wherever you go throughout that day, you might you might see a van that's nice written or a, an advertisement that you like or a quote. I mean, I picked up a quote today. We had an MP down today, and she said we've done a tour at our, biz, uh, our company, and she said this is a tour of all tours, and I thought that was a great saying. So. We will now use that, so you have, to, you have to learn from other people. Your business is well known for having lots and lots of celebrity customers. That's, that's one of the sort of things you're known for in the media. How did, how did that all happen? What's your advice for you know, small businesses that maybe want to get some high profile customers? Well, I mean, you know, they're, look, they're the same as any customer. You know, um, you know, they pay the same money, they get the same service, but obviously the profile goes out there. They talk amongst themselves and you know Simon Cowell might say to Richard Branson, I use Pimlico, I use Pimlico and uh, uh, Ellen Mirage, Mirage is her name, she would say the same thing or, and um, Joanna Lung, Lumley would say the same thing. So it doesn't matter really if you're working for a celebrity or for a normal person, the money's the same, the service is the same, but the profile that they do send out is quite high. So, it's, it's a bit like, you know, if you work for Mrs. Smith in East London, she re recommends you to Mrs. Jones in East London. If you work for jo Joanna Lumley in Kensington, she uh, probably mention you to Ellen Mirren in Kensington. So, they're the same type of thing, but of course an high profile customer is very good for the business. We have to talk about Brexit. So you're, you're a high profile um, Remain supporter. What, what are your thoughts on everything that's happened and, and what, what it maybe mean, means for small businesses? Well, unfortunately, I don't want to be doom and gloom. I believe we was better off in the EU than out of it. I think things were going well, unemployment was down, the deficit was being cut. Um, more and more sort of things were going better for the country. I believe that it's not the right move, but I also believe that we've all got to get together and make the most of it. And, and of course we do well. And we, you know, of course we come through it. But the end result is I'd rather stay in the EU than be out of it. But I do believe that we've got the right person in charge now, Theresa May. You know, I think she's going to do the best job she's going to do for the country. And you know, I believe we'll get through it, but I believe we've got some tough times coming up. Do you think small businesses should be doing anything? Is there anything they can be doing? Or do we just don't know? Yeah, no. I think small businesses need to, to, to just tighten in a little bit. And we, we, look, we've got a storm coming, undoubtedly. And we need to weather the storm. So what I would say is just cut your costs accordingly. Tighten in a little bit. And let's just wait for, you know, I think it's 18 months now and we'll see what we're, we're, we're coming up against. But let's not kid anybody, things will go worse before they get better, I believe. There's a lot of talk about the gig economy and self-employment and how people are employed. I mean, it's in a lot of the party manifestos. What are your thoughts on sort of the modern workplace and what it means for employers? Well, I think it needs to be looked at and we need clarity on, on what's going on, whether you're self-employed or, or whether you're PAY or whether you're work. I think it's very confusing at the moment and we need to clarify and I think we, we have a meeting or we've just had a meeting with Matthew Taylor which has, has tried to, you know, we've put our story across to him. We just need a lot more sort of uh, understanding of, of who's who. And I think once we get that, then, then we can carry on. But I think it'd be a very much a shame if they do away with the self-employed or the gig economy, what they what they want to call it. But you know, you have to remember, there's a lot of businesses that run it the proper way. You know, we're not all Uber, we're not all these delivery driver people. You know, some of us run it in the right way. It's very beneficial for a lot of workers, beneficial for the employer, and we just need to clarify it. And just finally, to the small business owners that are watching this video, what, what would be your sort of key tips on running and growing a business as successful as yours? Okay, my, my biggest tip I give to people is to employ people. I believe that's the way forward. You know, I, I believe that, you know, unless you employ people and take people on, you can't grow your business. So if you want to succeed in life, you must employ people. My other tip I would say is, is very much go by your instinct. You know, there's no better judge than yourself whether things are going right or wrong. And probably the other tip I, I, I'd be very sort of uh, point out to people is if you have made a mistake, and we all make loads of mistakes, 
you know, you have to own up to it and, and then change it and get over it. You've got you've got to be prepared that, you know, business ain't an easy ride, but I don't think you, you get to the top unless you have setbacks on the way. And all, all I'm saying, it's probably like a boxer. If you get knocked, knocked over in the ring, if you get up, you know, and you carry on, you often win the fight. And, and that's the same with business. You're gonna get loads of knocks and, and, and sort of uh, things you don't wanna do in sleepless nights, but you have gotta get over them, I think, to be successful. And all I would say is, the end result is, you know, a jockey will never get off a winning horse. So if you think you're on a winning horse, then stay on it and just keep going. But be realistic. Fantastic. Charlie, thank you very much. Thank you.